Alright, welcome back to RPG Maps and whatever the f no, fuck. Fantasy Art and RPG Maps. It's episode 3, probably. Part 2 still, but it's episode 3. Uh, we're drawing woods and forests today. Uh, drawing forests is a fun and interesting way of adding a lot of dimension to your map. Starting with a general area sketch, you'll lay in a few trees here and there, first drawing the large groups of trees that will form the main parts of your major forests. After that, you'll add smaller woodlands or standing bodies, and finally end by adding some definition to your woods. There are a few separate techniques for the depiction of forests, with some different shapes and sizes that you can use, though each is easy to learn. Okay. Step one, we're going to mark our forest areas, our general forest areas. So forests usually live at the base of mountains because of all the water runoff. That's what it said in the beginning of this chapter. And let's add one right, right here. Step one, mark your general area forests. It's general forest area. Take your pencil and lightly draw the general areas where you want to place your major forests. Press very lightly since you'll be using these as a guide. Okay, let's go up here. This will be our guide. I'm going to make a, a couple of them. This guy made a very fun looking one. So I'm also going to make a very fun looking one. Okay. That's one forest. Fuck it, why not? This is another one. And cool. These are my forests. I'm only going to do these four because my life is precious and I don't want to waste it. All right. Come on up. Oops. Come on up to another layer. Pop out this ding. Step two, draw the first tree. Ho! Uh, now comes the fun part. Using your pencil, draw your first tree by making a triangular shape with a flatter bottom. Your tree should be placed within the guidelines you drew. Okay. Triangular shape. Cool. Step three, draw major forests. Once you've drawn in your first tree, expand your forest by drawing more trees using the same general shape as your first one. Keep drawing trees one next to another until you feel satisfied with the size and shape of the grouping. Feel free to vary the size of your trees to make them look more organic. Grouping together similar tree shapes adds variety. Alright, so draw a triangle with a flattish base. No, we'll do it down here. Triangle with a flattish base. Okay. Triangle with a flattish base. You know what I've just noticed that I'm doing? That the book does not tell you to prepare for? These trees are as tall as my mountains. I don't know if he brings that up somewhere in the future, but uh, right now I'm noticing it, so I'm going to correct it. Draw these trees to be uh, substantially smaller than my mountains. How's about that, huh? I might need a new graphics tablet. I don't draw very often, but when I do, I find myself incredibly frustrated by how underwhelmingly good my graphics tablet is not. It could very well just be Adobe Animate, too. But, who knows. Um, personally, I hate Let's Plays that leave boring, uninteresting things in them. Look at this. I'm pressing down on my fucking graphics tablet and nothing's happening. Alright, so I'm noticing in his picture that these are going like this. I mean, this kind of looks like a, like a watercolor a little bit when I just kind of do that and it skips along. However, I don't really think it's it's not intentional that I'm doing that. 
that's just how this is going. Okay. Uh, another thing I'm noticing in his picture is that there's not a whole lot of space between these trees. Every single tree has some kind of a tree between them. So, that's something I'm going to bear in mind. Look at that! Why is that so fucking thick? What the fuck? I'm starting to like the look of the, uh, the ink pen kind of feel that these trees are giving me. Like I'm just kind of scratching them in with a quill. And the lines keep getting blurry and gross shit. I'm definitely saying that for my own sake. <laughs> Fuck it, sure. Uh, step four, add minor woodlands. Add little tiny... Uh, little sections of trees off away. Sorry, I didn't read the thing like I was supposed to. Once your major forests have been drawn, add in some random groupings of trees in and around your major groupings and add more flavor and variety. Try to draw your minor woodlands by grouping three to five trees. These minor woodlands can be placed anywhere on the map, though they look really good when they are used to break up really sparse areas. Okay. Three. One. Two. Three. one up there I'll put one right here f for the fun of it It looks messy as fuck. <laughs> it still, still looks kind of cool, I guess. Uh, and you know what? I'm seeing a, uh, a nice little feature that's opened itself up for me. And I know he's going to talk about it later. But I'm going to draw a road that goes in like this. Because that looks great to me. I think that's a good idea. I could probably put a town right here, too. Like right there. But I'll get to that later when he comes to it. I'm going to leave this there just as a guide. But, um, yeah. You know what? I don't hate this. Um, when I scroll out all the way, it looks a little stupid, but, um. <laughs> no, there's no but. That's just it. That just looks a little stupid, but. <laughs> whatever. We'll fucking go with it. Alright. Um, that's. Step four. Step five. Define your trees. Once your major and minor woodlands are finished, it's time to add some definition. Take your pencil and gently shade in the bottom corner positions of each tree with a few lines. Try and stick only to one side of the tree shape to provide a more uniform look, though some trees should be more shaded than others. After shading, add trunks. Okay. So pull out the bottom corners. I can do that. Alright, there we 
we go. Fucking. What the fuck was that? <laughs> it just does. It just does shit. Like. All right. I have stood by Adobe through their darkest times, like when they accidentally leaked all their fucking client information and stuff. That was super cool, you guys. Thanks for doing that. I had to go on credit card. Or I had to go on credit monitoring for a couple years. That was nice. I really appreciate that, guys. But I stood by him through that. Still paid for Creative Cloud. You know. If uh, I'm just saying, if Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere were not as fucking dope as they were and utterly unrivaled in the... Uh, you know the the marketplace of uh, video production. I would definitely 100% switch to someone else if I could find someone that could hold a candle to your fucking products because you guys have absolutely ass raped um, everything that you have gotten your fucking grubby little hands on, uh, and it's not fucking okay what you're doing to Flash. I'm so upset that they killed Flash. <laughs> but it it was a medium that was dying anyway. I understand why they did it, but don't mean I gotta be I don't mean I gotta bend over and suck dick about it. I'm still pretty upset regardless. But uh yeah. Flash is dead because you let it die and uh that's your own fucking fault. You guys bought one of the coolest tools to ever hit the internet, and then you fucking sucked your own dick about it when Steve Jobs was like, yo, add, a, add Apple to, to your, add a Flash to Apple, and y'all are like, nope. Yeah, like, I got other shit to do, man. Sorry, Steve Jobs. Have fun with your fucking cancer, you, you fucking hippie. God, how dumb is that? Steve Jobs, one of the most brilliant minds ever, huh? So was that why he switched to, uh, you know, Chinese medicine and drinking fucking weird blends of tea to cure his, his pancreas cancer or whatever the fuck he had? Yeah, most brilliant mind of our generation. My goddamn ass. The dude was a moron. The fucking Spurg Lord who did acid once and thought he was the shit. He spent, uh... I think he said he spent weeks designing the box that the Apple iPhone would come in. And uh, my brother said it best. He goes, that's not creativity. That's autism. Is That's the perfect way to describe that. Let's just <laughs> draw our tree chunks and get the hell out of here. Okay. Tree trunks. Wow, that's um, kind of pulling a lot out of this. I'm now very aware that I'm looking at trees, at least. There we go. Step six, finish with shading. After your tree trunks are laid in, it's time to draw and shade the forests and woodlands. Use your pencil to draw lines around the bottom of your tree trunks and along the sides of your established forests, as well as in between the gaps you have left. Try to only add shade lines to the bottom of your tree groupings, varying your line length to give an appropriate shading look. Hey, how about that? All right. Uh... What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to pull it underneath this one. And that's where I'm going to put all my shading. Now, I'm going to turn my tablet sideways so I can get my good range of motion. Uh, 
Let's turn off tilt. I think that's what my problem is. I uh, couldn't tell you why, but this is certainly making it look nicer. And then if I really cared, which I kind of don't, I could uh, go through and pull out all these lines that I'm putting inside of the trees. But, I uh, again, I don't. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, I don't hate this. There we go. Yeah, I mean, that definitely doesn't look bad. Uh, it doesn't look good, but... I mean, I kind of get what's going on there, you know? So I suppose that that's done its job. Uh, let's see here. Types of trees. Be creative with the shapes and sizes of your trees. Trees come in a whole variety of shapes and sizes. You should use several different types for different tree looks. Certain shapes can represent different types of trees, and they look best when grouped together. However, mixing and matching makes for an interesting and complex forest that will be sure to add dimension to your world. Nice try. Not doing that. I'm going to cut the episode here, and then the next episode we'll do rivers and tributaries. Yeah, tributaries. Alright, cool. See you then.